I think it's not fair to describe her by one word. There's so many words. But if I had to pick one, it would be thoughtful. Iconoclastic. Optimistic. Two words. I would describe Odette Harris as a force of nature. It's three words. My name is Odette Harris, and I am the director of brain injury, and I'm the vice chair for diversity for the Department of Neurosurgery, both at Stanford. And I am also a deputy chief of staff for rehabilitation at the Palato VA. My most vivid memories of Jamaica as a child are school. I think I was three years old when I started school. I dreamed of many things, actually. I think the three things that I remember very vividly wanting to be a kindergarten teacher, and I wanted to be an accountant or a pediatrician. I actually entered college with the desire to pursue biology as a major and to be pre-med. But then people along the way also supported that, and, and I think it just made me able then to apply as a strong candidate for medical school and then obviously get in. I think there were many factors that drew me to Stanford. I think one was the location. Many of the schools that I got into, their campuses did not rival the beauty of Stanford. And also the research opportunities at Stanford were incredible. Stanford really delivered. You know, it definitely held the intellectual challenge. It was stimulating, it was exciting, and the opportunities were just mind-boggling. I just felt honored and excited, all in the same stream of emotion. I also made lifelong friends. I met my husband here, so it's delivered. It's delivered for sure. I met Odette, and actually I know her as Odie, during the first couple of years of medical school when she expressed an interest in neurosurgery and came knocking on my door. My first impression when I see an eager beaver young medical student who wants to be in, in someday a neurosurgeon is that there's no hope and that uh, their enthusiasm is far ahead of the reality once they learn what it takes to be a neurosurgeon. Well, obviously I was wrong. I mean, Odette is a special creature. Odette has just the determination and energy that is easy to underestimate. If someone who looked like me had walked into Dr. Adler's office, who looked like Dr. Adler, and said, you know, I think, and, and by the way, my speech at the time was just peppered with like, right? So I think, like, I want to be like a neurosurgeon. Like, I think I totally would like to do that. I don't know that I would have responded with the support and lack of disbelief. And yet, he did. He never once doubted my dream or my aspirations. He anticipated things that I just never even knew and could, you know, at least give me the tools to tackle them when they arose. And he guided me every bit of the way and still guides me. There are many other mentors along the way. I mean, it takes, it truly takes a village, right? Um, what I didn't appreciate at the time was that, uh, you know, Adler was, was making sure that that village existed. But I have to give credit also to people like Dr. Shore, who, you know, was my preceptor when I came to Stanford. Uh, so he was like my first sort of formal mentor and still serves as a sounding board and a support and is really like family. I think Dr. Gary Steinberg, the chairman of our department is a visionary when it comes to creating diversity at the level of our residents, our fellows, and our faculty. My earliest impression of Dr. Harris is that she's just simply brilliant. We had research labs that were essentially right next to one another, so literally she's been ahead of me every step of the game. So I think Odette has advanced the field of neurosurgery in several respects. If you Look at it from a scientific standpoint. She's published papers as a resident that looked at molecular markers of nerve growth. If you look at surgical outcomes, she's written a plethora of papers that have looked at ways to improve outcomes with different surgical techniques. Her background, her presence, her stature have sort of opened up the opportunity of neurosurgery as a career possibility for countless number of medical students, residents, and practicing physicians. I think that it's very important to have people like Odette in positions that she's in, not just for women, not just for people of color, but for everyone. Stanford is 
leaps and bounds ahead of the field as in general in terms of diversity. Um, our chairman has probably trained more African-American neurosurgeons than any other program in the country. We're on track to train similar numbers in terms of women in neurosurgery. And I feel honored to be a part of that legacy and a part of that impact in the field to redefine what excellence can look like. Dr. Harris is both a personal and professional mentor to me. This is traditionally a very male-dominated field in medicine, and it's just good to see a role model who can provide an alternative, and to see her do it at such a high level, it's inspiring. I think when people come into my office and they tell me their dreams, which I think is, first of all, an incredibly intimate thing, I have to kind of channel my inner Dr. Adler. All I need to do is to support them and to give them that spark of hope and to give them that guidance that might get them there. The Castilea Palo Alto VA partnership really is about bringing our young people together with veterans so that they can learn from each other, break down stereotypes, and understand the importance of the veterans hospital in our local community. My work with Castilea is incredibly meaningful. I think the pipeline for girls in the neurosciences is something that is vital to the field. I love working with them. One of the projects that uh, we do uh, with them that's most meaningful to me is a year-long initiative where the girls come to the VA. But what I love about that is the commitment to long-term impact, not just let's come and do one thing and leave, but let's have these girls understand um, the importance of science, understand the importance of healthcare, understand the importance of veterans and serving and the price of freedom. Watching her work with students, watching her talk to a patient, watching her advocate for the Boys and Girls Club. When students have the opportunity to sit in a session with Odette, they are captivated. And I think the energy that she gives off and the passion that she shares with them is coupled with this this real sense of this is possible for you, and I'm interested in helping make it possible if you're willing to do the work. We, as students, get to experience what it's like being a veteran and a patient at the VA hospital, and we get to see how the, the veterans are reintegrated into the community and into society after injury. I mean, when you look at some of the work that she's done, uh, in Jamaica. She has researched and published about methods of caring for traumatic brain injury patients and how to optimize the care, even under circumstances where uh, resources are limited, so that we can improve the outcomes. And, and people benefit from that all over the world. My family supports me in every way, from my husband to my children to my mother. Much of what inspires me to do what I do is the fact that I have two daughters. I think the passion comes from wanting to make a better world for them. Dr. Harris deserves the RISE Award because she embodies all the essential elements of this award. Odette has grit. And um, she has hustle, passion, perseverance. What Odette also brings uh, to the table here is her background, her life story, her ability to galvanize, inspire, and encourage patients, the next generation of uh, uh, medical students, neurosurgeons, that they can basically accomplish their dreams as long as they work hard and inspire and endeavor. Receiving the RISE Award, oh my gosh, I'm truly honored. I mean, I'm really, really honored. Receiving it gives credibility to the fact that as an academic surgeon, um, your impact can be not only what you do in the clinical realm, but how the clinical realm can actually truly extend into the communities where we exist. Having a chairman, Dr. Steinberg, who supported that has been very powerful, and having a director at the VA, um, both Lisa Freeman and now Mr. Fitzgerald, who supports that vision, have just been wonderful. And now to have an award to say, yes, that's actually um, a that's actually a really valid way to think about this. Um, it feels, feels, feels fantastic.